Welcome back to Lazy Day Crochet. We are on our third part to our Learning to Crochet series. We need your yarn, your hook. You will be using a darning needle this time and then a couple of stitch markers. And again, they don't have to be fancy. They can be anything, a loose piece of yarn, bread wrappers, it doesn't matter. Anything to mark the stitch. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, first thing I wanna say, please trust the process. Just please trust the process. Okay, we're going to get our yarn on our hook. Leave a fairly long tail this time. I've, I've got like, I don't know, three inches or more. This is, uh, I explained how I do this in the part one of this series. So if you have questions on how you get your yarn on your hook, go back to part one and then part two, because each one of these series uh, parts build on each other. All right, so we are going to start off by crocheting 11. One, two, three. All right, we have 11. All right, to get started, we're going to go to the four fourth stitch from the hook. So one, two, three, four. The easiest way is to count this side loop. One, two, three, four. We're going to double crochet into that fourth stitch. If you are unsure how to do a double crochet, go to part two of the series and I walk through how you do a double crochet in a, into a chain. Okay. So we're going to stop here, pull the yarn out, we're going to do two things. One, this is the last, this is the double crochet that we did right here. You see that V right there? This turning chain is going to count as a double crochet. So this turning chain is technically our first stitch. So you're going to go with your marker and mark that top of that three chain right there. All right, you're going to keep straighten out your loop. If, if it's twisted or turned, just straighten it out. Put your hook straight in the circle. Pull the other end, the end that goes to the ball, and it'll tighten up. We have one double crochet, which is the turning chain, and one double crochet we actually put in. We're going to do one more double crochet in that same space. So we go in, pull through, we go through two. Now, this, doing that process, that's the process of a single crochet. And basically to do a double crochet, you're doing, you're stacking two single crochets on top of the other. That's what makes up a double crochet. We're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Yarn over. Hold your yarn with your finger because when you when we do we'll start to go into the next stitch, if you pull too hard, you're going to wrap your stitches around or your chain around your hook and you don't want that. So wrap around your hook, put your finger on it, 
this, oops, this was the stitch we just went into, right, with these two. We're going to skip the next one. We're going to go into the second one away. So again, you can count the top loops. This is one stitch. This is the second stitch. Make sure you hold. Go into that second loop. Make a double crochet. There's one. Yarn over another double crochet into that same space. If you're having trouble with this hole getting really big, you can hold on to it and it will help to keep it from being overstretched, okay? So yarn over, go into the stitch, pull, grab the yarn, pull through. Now here is where you would grab the stitch. Then you go through two, go through two, and it just keeps you from pulling this and making it really big. All right, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Let's identify our stitches again. This is the one we just did the three in. So we're going to go two away. We're going to skip this loop. We're going to go into this loop. Yarn over. Hold it. Go in that loop. Double crochet. Again, this is the one the hole or the stitch we're working in. Yarn over, double crochet again in the same space. Now we have two, we're gonna do one more. One more double crochet in that same space. Now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go back to our stitches. This is where we just were that put in the three double crochets. So we go to our next loop. We're going to skip that. We're going to go to the second loop away and do double crochet. Now if you're curious if your count is right, you will have one loop left at the end. Okay, so if you have one stitch, one chain left at the end, then you have done this correctly. So we're going to yarn over, go back into that same stitch and do another double crochet. Yarn over, go back in that same space with another double crochet. You have three double crochets. Then we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're going to go where our stitch marker is because we're going to end this round. You see that hole that your stitch marker is in? It's the top of the turning chain that we started with. You're going to, I'm sorry, you're going to slip stitch into that space. So you're going to go in where your stitch marker is. You're going to grab the yarn and pull it through. And instead of doing the yarn over again, you just turn, you ha grab that yarn with the head of your hook, turn it, turn the head and pull it through that last stitch on your hook. Okay, now we're going to take out this marker. We're going to pull out this loop. Okay, so you just have a big loop so your hook can come out. We're going to turn our work over. Okay, 
you can lay it just flat down on a surface you see the tail that we left this is the tail not the loop and not the yarn from the ball it's the tail that we left from the starting from our starting foundation chain you're going to put your yarn on your needle the, you can just you know push the end and and just yank it but I split I personally split my thread doing that all the time so what I do is I lay the yarn or lay the hook against the yarn and fold it over and then I like pull it tight and then squeeze it I pull the hook out I mean I pull the needle out and you see that little bit of squished yarn right there you're going to just put the put the needle on top of it and push down and so that yarn comes through you just grab a hold of it as it's coming through the eye and pull on it and it's you have threaded your needle okay now it is important that you do not do anything with this loop and the yarn that comes from the ball okay we are only focusing on this tail end you have the cluster that it's attached to you can see it moving when I move the yarn right we want the cluster the one that we're looking at is the one that is across from this big gap so we want this one right here this cluster is what we want we're not going to do anything with this one we're not going to do anything with this one we're going to take our needle and we're going to run it along the edge of this cluster just work it nice and slow until you get it through you just work it through those threads and when you turn it over you should not see your hook hanging out on this side because this is the front side you don't want to see that so as long as your hook hasn't come out front then then you're you're doing it right okay so we're going to pull our needle through here oops almost pulled it off the needle and we're going to pull our thread until that little knot right here at the end which you can feel it this is the knot that we started with to get the uh, yarn on the hook you're going to pull it until that knot hits the side of this stitch okay we're going to go back this is the one we just crocheted through the back right here okay so pull till that knot hits that stitch and just kind of put your finger on it because you don't want it to get loose you're gonna skip the first loop go over that loop go over that first loop it doesn't matter where it's at but if you put it back through where you just came from you undo your stitch you see what I'm saying so you have to go over the top that front loop once you get it started in there you can move your finger you just want to get it through the those stitches on the back of that cluster there's no perfection okay doesn't matter how many it's gone through the point is you have to get it through some of those stitches okay 
Now, this is what we have. Do not over pull it. If you tighten it, you are going to be squishing the shit out of the bottom of these stitches here. So you just want to tug it where it is, um, where it just, there's no loose yarn. Okay? We're going to do it again. We're going to skip the first loop. This loop may not be the first loop on yours. Just skip the first loop. The whole point is, if you go back in the same way, you'll undo your stitches. You can undo your stitches through here. So go over the top loop, or the, the front loop, whichever one that is to you, and try to go back under these stitches. I don't like that I have this gap here between this one and this one. Let me see if I can get it through there. There we go. All right, so that's better. I picked up a couple more threads through there. You're, it's not showing through the front. I'm gonna pull it through. This is our third time through. You're going to pull it until that loose yarn right here is gone. There we go. So nice and slow, we're going through, 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 three times. They say the magic is three times, that if you do it three times, it won't come out. Then we're going to cut the yarn right at the end of your last loop, okay? Do not cut the loop that it's sitting next to. Don't cut this loop or we have to start over. So this is what that looks like once you've sewn it in, okay? You can throw away that bit. All right, now we're gonna flip our work back over and this, once again, is the correct side of your work. And we have officially started your granny square. The whole point of doing it this way is it keeps you from... There's a traditional way where you end up creating a circle out of four stitches and then in that circle you do your threes, your spaces, your threes, your spaces, your threes, your spaces but it's all in one little circle and it's a really tight space to work in especially when you're just getting started so this start is just to help you to understand how the process of the granny square, the, the, the basic of how it's supposed to look. But everything connects at this circle. Okay? Now, straighten your loop back up. Put your hook in. Pull the yarn from the ball and we will continue. You're going to chain three. This counts as a double crochet. So we are going to mark the top stitch, that third stitch, because that is going to represent the top of our double crochet. Now chain three. One, two, three. Go up, put your fingers in this corner space. Right here, this corner space. This is where we're going. The three stitches, the three chains we just put in is to skip over this cluster of three. 
So yarn over like we did before, hold on to it, you're going to double crochet into this corner. Yarn over, double crochet in that corner again. Yarn over, double crochet in the corner again. If you need to, just pull the stitches over to take the space out that's between them. All right, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Yarn over in this same corner space. We're going to do three more double crochets. We have made a new corner space. We're going to chain three to go over this cluster. Our next space is this corner space right here. We're going to do exactly what we did for this corner. All the corners will be done the same way. Three double crochets, chain four, three double crochets. So we're going to do that in this corner. Hold on to the yarn so it doesn't spin. We're going to do three double crochets here. We're going to chain four. Scoot the stitches over a bit if you need to. Yarn over, hold it, put three more double crochets in that same corner. Now what are we doing? We have to jump over this cluster, which means we have to chain three. One, two, three. So we have jumped, doing those three, we have jumped over this cluster to this corner. This is our third corner. So we're going to do exactly like we did our other corners. Three double crochets, chain four, three double crochets. Hold your yarn, three double crochets. You can scoot the stitches over if you need to. Chain four, yarn over, do three more double crochets in that same corner space. Okay, now what do we have to do? We have to jump these three. So we chain three. We are coming up to our last corner. This is our fourth corner. We did one double crochet here. So in comparison, it's the last stitch of that corner. So here's our corner. It's the last double crochet. So if we look at the corner that we just did, here's the corner. This is our last double crochet, right? So in this corner, we have to do three double crochets, chain four, and two double crochets. And then we're going to connect with a slip stitch to our third uh, double crochet. Okay, so let's go back to that corner right here. Don't use this one. This is not the space. Right here is your corner space. Yarn over three double crochets. One, two, three, chain four, yarn over into the same space, but remember we already have our last double crochet right here. So we're only doing two double crochets. So one, oops, 
two. Now you can push the stitches a little closer to this third one. We're going to slip stitch into this stitch. So we're going to go in, yarn over, pull through, keep a hold of that same yarn and pull through the last loop. And then we're going to take our stitch marker out. All right, here's what we have. We are getting a granny square. Now, this round that we're going to do, our third round here, is going to show you the pattern that you will continue to do around and around and around and every time you do a corner you are increasing how many clusters you have between the corners the spaces and the clusters you have between the corners okay so I'll show you what I mean straighten your loop back out so it's not twisted put your hook in Pull your yarn from the ball. Let's slip stitch into this side. And chain three. Is that going to get it off that corner? Let's find out. So we have the chain three. Oh. We need to mark the third chain. Yarn over two more double crochets into this space. I can live with that a little better. All right, now. So we have our space. We did our three double crochets. What do we have next? We have a cluster of three so we chain three we're gonna jump over that cluster we're in a corner so we do two clusters in the corners there's one double two doubles three doubles chain four hold it Hold your yarn on your hook, three more doubles, one, two, three. There's our corner. Now what do we have to do? We have three cluster, or th the three doubles for a cluster is what we see next, right? So we chain three. Okay, we've gone over this cluster. What do we have? We have a space. Every space, we're going to put a um, cluster of three double crochets. One, two, three. Okay, so we have three double crochets into that space. What do we have next? We have another cluster of three. We have to go over it. One, two, three. That brings us to the corner space. Corner spaces always have two clusters with a chain four between them. So we're going to yarn over, hold it, two, I'm sorry, three double crochets. You can pull the stitches over if you need to, if they go too far. Chain four. Oh no, I have the hiccups. Double crochet three more times into that corner space. Okay, so our corner is done. What do we have next? We have a cluster of three. Chain three to get over it. Next we have a space. In all spaces 
we are going to put a cluster of three. Okay, so we put three in that space. What do we have next? We have a cluster of three, so chain three to jump it because you don't do anything with clusters. That brings us to a corner. Every corner, every corner, all four corners, every single time, we'll get three double crochets, chain four, and then three more double crochets. There's your corner. All right, what do we have next? We have a three cluster. We don't do anything with clusters, so we're skipping it. Chain three. That takes us to the space. Every space gets a cluster of three double crochets. One, two, three. So now we have a three in this space. What do we have next? We have a cluster of three. So we chain three to skip it. That brings us into another corner. Corners are three double crochets, chain four, three double crochets all into the same space. There's three. What's next? Three cluster. Chain three to skip it. What do we have? We're back at where we started. The marker is in the next stitch. So we, we did our chain three to skip this cluster. So we are going to slip stitch into this stitch. Go through, keep a hold of the same yarn, and go through the second loop. Remove your stitch marker. All right. Here we are. We have got another round down. And look what you are making. You are making a really awesome granny square. Now, once you get into the habit or into the rhythm of how this granny square works, meaning you're skipping the clusters, skipping the clusters, and you're crocheting into the spaces, and you're identifying the corners because that takes two clusters and a chain of four whereas when you're jumping a cluster we're doing a chain of three once you get into the habit of this because you can make this as big as you want like you would get it out to a baby blanket size if you want to the square is whatever size square you want to make now typically you'll make a bunch of the you can make a bunch of these squares and then you connect them at the edges. I would not do that to this one. The reason being is this is your practice granny square. The techniques that you're learning in here is how to put in this the pattern of a, of a granny square the three the space the three the space the three how you handle corners this is this can be really complicated when you get started because you may only do one 
treble in the corner. One, I mean, one cluster, one cluster of three double crochets, and just fly past it. If you do that, you can't make your corner on your next round. You have to have these two clusters with the chain to be able to make your next corner. So if you come to this one and only put one cluster of three here, one cluster of three here, one cluster of three here, you don't have the space needed to make the corner. And you have to pull it, you have to frog it all the way back out to pass the corner so you can go back and do the corner correctly with the three doubles, chain four, three doubles. So use this one as a training granny square because when you do this when you are comfortable with the way that this pattern is then look up different granny square types because there are some that have no holes there are um, different types of stitches that can be made into a granny square so the holes won't be as large because your typical skip it's usually two you chain two over a cluster instead of three and then it's usually three in the corners instead of four but the whole reason why I added the extra chains is to make it more comfortable for you to put your three double crochets into and to easily see where these holes are. So when you start actually doing a granny square, you will not do the center like this. You will do it with crocheting four, slip stitching to the end and creating a circle and then putting your clusters into that main circle, the clusters with the spaces. And you can watch, I mean, find the granny square that you think is the, the neatest and, and work on that. But learn this first. When you can make two or three rounds and have your spaces and you don't accidentally put two double crochets instead of three that you're not skipping your corners once you get that down then start looking at other patterns for granny squares and find one that you like you can learn how to change colors um, and then they have different patterns the concept is the same Right? Like you're just going to go around in the circle, circle, circle. The concept is the same. So if you learn it this way, you'll be able to do any, any granny square after that. Because you're just going to have to learn what stitches you do and how many chains you do to skip. But the concept of a granny square, you will have grasp. And that is the important part. Okay? So if you're unsure of how we started with this, you can start back at the very beginning and start from this circle, like especially how to sew in, how to sew your ends in, because you'll have to do that on all your projects. Okay, so now you'll see here that we are starting at the cluster, right? So, you can do one of two things. You can um, slip stitch across, which means you go in between this one, slip stitch. Oh, did I? Yes, I did. I split the yarn. Okay. 
So here's where we ended, right? We're at the end of this treble or double crochet. So you can go on the other side of this double crochet and slip stitch, which means you pull through and pull through. Go through the, between these two stitches. Pull the yarn through and just instantly go through that other yarn on your or the other loop on your hook. And then you get to this one. You slip stitch into that space and then you'll go one, two, three because you have to have a uh, cluster here of three double crochets. The slip stitching across is the easiest way to get to the space that you, that you start with. So we slip stitch into this space and then we did a chain three. So the chain three, the top chain is the top of what would be a double crochet there. And then you would do two more double crochets here. One, two. So there you have three double crochets into this space. And then you do the same thing. Evaluate what is in front of me. What's next? You have a cluster of three, so you chain three. Then you have your corner, so you put a cluster of three double crochets. We're at a corner, so we do four. Yarn over. Another cluster of three in the same corner space. All right, what do we have next? A cluster of three, so one, two, three, because we don't do anything with the clusters. We're just, we're just always skipping over the clusters. We only focus on the spaces, okay? Those big holes, that's all we need to focus on. So yarn over three double crochets in that space. One, two, three, okay. What's next? A cluster. So chain three. That brings us to the space, which spaces always get a cluster. One, two, three. Now we're at a, we have a cluster next. So chain three. Then we have a corner. So corners are the same. Three double crochet cluster chain four, three double crochet cluster. Two, three, four. Okay, what do we have in our corner space? The cluster, the chain four, and the cluster. So what do we have next? We have a cluster of three. So we chain three. Then we have the space. We do a cluster of three in the spaces. So what do we have next? A cluster of three. One, two, three. Space. A cluster of three double crochets goes in all the spaces. Okay, cluster of three, you chain three. We're in the corner space again. Corners are cluster of three, double crochets, chain four, cluster of three. Oops. So cluster, chain four, cluster, all in this space, all in the corner space. 
So what do we have next? A cluster of three. So you chain three. Space. All spaces get a cluster of three double crochets. What do we have next? We have a cluster of three. One, two, three. What do we have next? We have a space. All spaces get a cluster of three double crochets. What do we have next? We have a cluster of three. One, two, three. We skip that. Where are we next? We are in the corner. Corners are always the same. It doesn't matter how big this granny square gets. Corners, spaces, and clusters, you handle the same way. So cluster of three. One, two, three, four. Cluster of three in the same corner space. What do we have next? A cluster of three. One, two, three. We skip that, we have a space. All spaces get a cluster of three double crochets. Cluster of three, one, two, three. We're at where we started. So we're going to slip stitch into the top where this stitch marker is. Okay. All right. I think you understand the concept here. Now it just takes the time to do it. So here we are at the first stitch right in front of this space. If you want, make it easy. Slip stitch across that cluster because we don't do anything with the clusters. We slip stitch into this space and then you start exactly like you do every row. Right? Once you're in the space, what do you put in the space? Three double crochets. One. You chain up three to be a double crochet. You mark that stitch. Okay? And then space has to have three, so you're going to put two more double crochets in that space. So this is three double crochets in this space. And then you do the same thing. What's next? A cluster of three, so you chain three. What's next? A corner. You do what all corners need. All corners need two clusters of double crochets with a chain four in the middle. So cluster, chain four, and then another cluster. Okay, so there's your corner. What do you have next? You have a cluster of three, so you chain three. We've skipped that. We have a space cluster spaces get a cluster of three double crochets. You see the pattern. All it takes now is practice. Keep going around. Keep going around. When you can make multiple rounds and get the clusters right, your corners right, your spaces right. When you can get it without, with, by doing, you know, several rounds, three or four rounds, without making a mistake, then you are, then you have understood the pattern of a granny square. 
but don't rush it. If you keep, I mean, if you make mistakes, there's nothing wrong with that. Just keep practicing. Go around and around and around and around and around and around and around. As, I mean, honestly, as big as you want, as big as you need to learn the pattern that this granny square is teaching you. All right. I'm going to leave it to you. You've got this. All right. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm nervous. You can do it. Make sure you use your stitch markers. If there's any part that you don't understand, back up the video. Go to where you need to be to understand where you got lost and go around and go around and go around. You can do this. All right, I'm out of here. If you're, when you're done, like when you get it and you want to send me a picture, I would love that. You can email it to me at sandy, S A N D Y dot lazy day crochet at gmail.com. And I would be happy to post your picture of what you accomplished in the on the community page of this uh, of this channel. All right. Good luck. Bye bye.